Sup, ladies and gentlemen, Akulon here, and welcome back to each of one of you. And of course, if you are new to the channel, thank you so much for joining us. I am very happy to have you here. In today's video, you're once again watching, watching an excerpt from the Sunday Night Show Show. People have asked me to upload the videos individually because they just don't want to wade through six hours of lore, which is basically what the Show Show is. Every Sunday, right here on YouTube, we discuss basically the lore for six hours, just hanging out. And, uh, you know, you guys get to share your opinions with me live. So you can join us every Sunday on the Shell Show. Also, you can join me live on Twitch. The links is in the description down below to Twitch and all of my other social media. Today's video, I think, is going to be rather interesting. I really do think you guys are going to enjoy it. We're looking at the Jailer, the Shadowlands, and asking the question. Did it all belong to him before all of this? Anyways, let's jump right into it. I hope you'll enjoy it. Come on. I think before the Jailer was banished and um, betrayed by his own or by Ilun or whoever betrayed him, um, I think the Shadowlands worked a little bit different. So when you look at the, the Kyrians, for example, you have the Kyrian Covenant whose sole purpose is to bring souls from the mortal realms into the Shadowlands. And by the way, I have finally learned why the Kyrians strip you of all of your memories. They need to ensure that you bring souls to the Shadowlands indiscriminately. This is why they strip you of everything. They strip you of your free will, your memories, what made you you. You are simply a vehicle. You bring the souls from the mortal realms into the Shadowlands. You do not ask questions. You do not judge. You simply do what needs to be done. That's it, right? Then you look at the Force One. The Force One saw a flaw in how the Archon conducts the business of the Kyrians. They saw an evil in the fact that they're being stripped of their memories. And to be quite honest, um, the Archon herself admits that maybe they have to change. Maybe some things that they've done isn't quite the way it should have been done. It's Uther's memories, really, that, that point this out to them. Then you look at the Maw, and there are these creatures that look exactly like the Kyrian, but they're called Mawsworn. And then, of course, we look at Arthas and the Valkyr, which look very similar to the Kyrians. We look at Odin and he's Valkyr, and they look eerily similar to the Kyrians. I believe the Morsworn was actually first. They were the winged warriors of the Shadowlands, and they weren't always created to bring all souls into the Shadowlands. They chose the souls that the Jailer and the Lords of Death wanted, so to build their army. If you look at Ardenweald, there are certain lower that doesn't stand out. So for example, look at um, Muazala, right? You have Muazala as one of the uh, as one of the lower. Muazala does not fit in the grand scheme of things. There is something off about Muazala. Unlike Buansamdi and most of the other lower, once uh, Muazala and Akar wishes to destroy. Azeroth. In uh, The Traveler, Muazala actually states that if he and the boy fought and he won, he would consume all of Azeroth. So they wish to destroy. There's also these orders that drop from Ardenweald, which it's literally labeled orders from the Ancient One where it says the Ancient One will claim um, the, the Throne of Death or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's, it's, it's along those lines. The first Loa that was ever created inside Ardenweald wasn't good. They were the warriors of the Lords of Death. Moazala, Akar... These were not good gods. These were not the gods that everyone reveres and, and worships. These were gods of destruction. That was the point of Ardenweald. That was, it, that was its original purpose. One of the reasons I say that is Ardenweald is the realm of life. 
within the Shadowlands, right? It's where life really is represented. But the Winter Queen's title has fuckled to do with life. Winter Queen. When I say winter, right? Is life really the thing that springs to mind? There's the Night Court inside Ardenweald. Ardenweald was never meant to recreate life on Azeroth. It was never meant to be the sort of reincarnation zone. It was meant to create gods that would conquer the Great Beyond. Right? The Winter Queen is a new asset placed there by Elune to do a very specific job. Then we look at Maldraxxus, the army of the Shadowlands. The Primus was captured by the Jailer. Why capture the Primus? What's the point? Then you have Sire Denathrius, and here's the, the only guy, I believe, that may w at one point have been part of the original Lords of Death. And by the way, if you guys don't know why I'm, why I'm speaking about the Lords of Death, um, it's Buon Samdi. Buon Samdi at the end of Shadows Rising says something very interesting. Actually, not at the end, but it's in the final chapters of the Shadows Rising. I can't remember the exact chapter. Uh, Buon Samdi states that Sylvanas is playing with powers beyond her own comprehension. And that the power that the Lords of Death have granted can easily be taken away. This was sort of a, an eye-opening moment for me. The, the powers that the Lords of Death, not Lord of Death, Lords of Death. Currently, the only guy we see active in the Shadowlands, and the more at least, that works with Sylvanas is the Jailer. So, Lord of Death would have made sense. We also most likely know that the other uh, Lords of Death that we know about, the Winter Queen, the Primus, uh, those guys, they have nothing to do with this. Right? They, they, they are not powering Sylvanas. So the Lords of Death might not just be the Jailer, might not be the only person that's been betrayed. I think Denathrius is one of the original Eternal Ones, one of the first Eternal Ones, and he struck a deal. At first he resisted Elune and her forces, and then they were attacked by the Light, another one of Elune's forces. The Light decimated the, uh, the Venthyr. You see, the problem is the Venthyr can't exist in the Light. This is one of the problems, by the way. This is one of the reasons why I think something is very, very strange within this world. If the Shadowlands truly is meant to be a natural circumstance, a natural entity, then why in the fuck can the Venthyr not exist in the light? The light destroys them and drives them crazy. And there's this giant area where the light wrecked Ravendraith. Right? I think after that attack, Sire Denathrius surrendered. He stood next to the Jailer. He stood shoulder to shoulder with the Jailer, fighting off the forces of Elune. But once his own realm was being fucked, if you will, he said, fine, I, I submit. I'm sorry. This is why he is once again working with the Jailer now. They've been biding their time. They've been waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike back. To take back what was taken from them. To take back the reins of the Shadowlands. The Vainthyr is remarkable at extracting anima. That's literally what the... You get sent from Ardenweald by the Winter Queen to Sidonathrius for that specific reason. The heart of Azeroth is dying, or the heart of the forest is dying because it's running out of anima. And the Winter Queen asks you to go to the Vainthyr because they are masters at extracting anima. I believe that the original purpose of the Shadowlands was the Lords of Death claiming souls that they saw fit, and Ravendraith was where they, 
they sort of built their batteries. So there they would take souls of the weak to cull them, to steal all of their anima so that they could use this anima to defeat the other cosmological forces. That was the point of, Vain of Ravendreth. So there is a war that is far greater than our own war in the Shadowlands. We are going to the Shadowlands to help fix death. But death has been broken for a long time, and maybe the fix that we wish to apply is actually keeping it broken. Savannas so doesn't state for no reason. This world is a prison. So it ties into my previous theory. I think Azeroth was once one of the Lords of Death. Now, I hear a lot of you immediately thinking, dude, there's no evidence of this. The beginning of Before the Storm, two of the leaders touches um, the blood of Azeroth. One of them sees a future where she rules everything. The other sees a future where he makes peace between everyone. Azeroth showed Sylvanas what she needed to see to set her free. She, saw, she showed Anduin what she needed to stay alive. You see, the, the war between the Alliance and the Horde, if it continued and continued and continued, Azeroth would be lost. Because our war would effectively stop us from defeating Nazoth. Nazoth had to die. Nazoth can't stay um, active. Because he would corrupt Azeroth, finally. But she wants to be free. And that's why she showed uh, Sylvanas everything she needed to see to set the plan in motion. I think nothing in the Shadowlands currently functions the way that it was meant to function. I cannot attack that. 